All right, so in this video, we're going to be solving the following problem in Python. We're going to want to write a program that takes an integer and test whether or not the nth bit in the binary representation of that integer is set or not. So a bit is set if it's equal to 1, and it's not set if it's equal to 0. So let's take an example. For instance, the binary representation of the number 6 is given by this representation here, 1, 1, 0. So if we think about the least significant bit as the one on the far right, so this is the least significant bit, this is bit 0, bit 1, bit 2, and the most significant bit here as bit 2 in this case, this is the leftmost bit, then our function should, if we ask for the zeroth bit, let's say this one right here, we ask is the zeroth bit set in the binary representation of the number 6, we should get false because this bit is not set, set to 0. And alternatively, if we ask whether or not the bits, let's say b2 or b1, that is either bit 2 or bit 1 are set, we should get a result of true because both of these bits are set to 1. So that's the whole function that we're going to be writing in this video. And it's going to combine the ideas that we saw from a previous video where we determined whether or not the binary representation of a number was even or odd, and we did that without using the modulus operator. So it's going to combine the idea that we used there, namely anding 1 together with the binary representation of that number, along with the bit shift operator. So we're going to take a look at how the bit shift operator works, what the result of that is, and then we're going to combine that with the AND function to essentially help us determine whether or not the nth bit in the binary representation of a number is set or not. So let's go down here and let's start creating another comment just to kind of get some intuition. So I'm just going to go ahead in this comment block and type in observation, and we're going to take a look at how the bit shift operator works. So we're going to consider a bit shift on the binary representation of 1. So we're going to see how if we shift over progressively by an incrementing number of bits, how this affects the binary representation of the number 1. So we have 1. Let's say we shift it over to the left by 0. So what this is effectively going to do is it's going to give us the binary representation of zero, of 1 because we're shifting over 1 to the left 0 times. So in other words, we're going to get the binary representation of 1. So this is shifting over to the left by 0 is the same thing as just the binary representation of 1. So we're shifting over to the left by 0 bits. So let's take 1, and let's again shift over to the left now, let's say by 1. So in this case, we have, again, the binary representation of 1, just as we did before. But now what we're going to do is we're going to take that 1, and we're going to shift it over to the left by 1. So the result of that is going to give us this particular binary expression here. Likewise, if we take 1, we shift it over, let's say, 2, that's going to give us this expression here, where we've shifted over the 1 from the right all the way to the second position of this number here. So shifting over 1 to the left by 2 is going to give us this thing here, and so on and so forth. So that's how the bit shift operator shifting bits to the left is going to affect the number 1 in this case. And we're going to combine that with what we saw in the even odd video for the bit manipulation series of videos as well. I'll leave a link to that video if you want to see that, if you need a refresher, or if you want to see kind of the precursor to this video, because this kind of combines that idea along with the bit shift operator idea to solve this problem. So we know how the bit shift operator works. And I'm just going to go ahead and say that we can combine, we can combine the shift operator along with the same idea that we saw in the even odd video. So I'll leave a link to that in the description of this video so you can check that out if you want to. So let's have another comment block just for a bit more intuition. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at some examples. So let's take a look at the example that we de described at the very top of this video, namely the number 6. So remember the binary representation of the number 6 is 110. And what we want to do is want to check, let's say, let's say that in this example we want to ask is the second bit set. So we want to check if the second bit, the binary representation of the number 6, is set. So we know that in this case it is because it's 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to, if we were to take, let's just say, this particular number, and, and, and we were to perform the AND operation between the binary representation of 6 and this thing, we'd essentially mask all of the other bits off. And then what we would do is we would have this 1 here, essentially to have us check is this nth, in this case second, bit set. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be ending everything, which is going to turn everything off like I said before, and then we're going to check, okay, is this 
added with this particular bit here is this one. If it's one, one and one, that's going to give us one. It's going to indicate to us that that bit is set. Otherwise, if this was zero, so for instance, if we had a similar situation, let's say we had this, we wanted to check if the zeroth bit was set, and we wanted to and it with this thing here, the zeroth bit, we would get zero because this is going to indicate to us that zero, the bit, the bit that is not set in this case, ended with one, is zero. So it's going to tell us, hey, if you get zero, that indicates that that particular bit that you're looking at is not set. Let's go ahead and put it back to that. We'll look at that example explicitly just so we're very clear on how this works. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take these two things together and we're going to add them together. So if we do that, what we get is one zero zero. So we essentially get something other than zero which indicates to us that this second bit is set. Let's go ahead and take another example. Again, we'll consider the number six. And then we're going to ask in this particular example here, let's say, is the zeroth bit set? So we know that in this very small example, the zeroth bit, which is highlighted here, is not set. It's equal to zero. So what we want to do here is we want to say, essentially, okay, let's take this number and basically just take an and operation between this and the binary representation of six. And if we do that, it's going to let us know if this bit is turned on or off. All the other bits are going to be flipped off because they're all anded with zero. So if we do that, if we perform the and operation between these things, so let's just go ahead and put an and here, then what we get is zero, zero, zero. So essentially what this is saying is that if we get a zero here for wherever one is, that is going to indicate that the nth bit we're concerned with here is not set. Alternatively, if we get a, anything other than zero, it's going to indicate that the nth bit, in this case the second bit, is set. So what are these things and how do we arrive at them? Well, these things can be arrived at by using the bit shift operator. So essentially all we're doing is we're taking one and we're shifting it over n positions. So in this case, n is two. So really what this represents is one shifted over by two. So that is that number there. Let me just move this over here so it's kind of lined up nice move these over here as well. So all we're doing is we're just shifting that one over by n, which in this case is two. We're taking the and between these two things and we're getting the result. We're checking if that result is zero or not. So same thing here. What we're doing is since we're checking the zeroth bit, we're taking one and we're moving that one along, in this case, zero positions because the and in this case is zero, we're moving along zero places and then we're taking the and between both of those results. So I'll just put in kind of a general observation that's going to be applicable for any other case that's going to kind of extrapolate upon both of these examples. And that is that if we and the result of shifting over by n with, let's say, the number in question, we obtain, we obtain zero or anything else. So if we obtain zero, so let's say if we have zero, then this is going to indicate the nth bit is not set. Otherwise, what we're going to do is we're going to say that the nth bit is set. So is set. So just like the last video on bit manipulation, this explanation is going to be much longer than the actual code that we write to perform this operation. But it's under it's important to understand how it arrives at its result. So let's go ahead and create a function. We'll call is nth bit set. It's going to take two things, x, which is going to be the number that we're going to feed into it. That will be an integer. And it's also going to take n. So n is going to be the bit that we want to check whether or not it's set or not. So all we really need to do is we need to ask this particular question. If x, the number that we take in, ended with one shifted over by n to the left, if that particular thing is true, then what we're going to return is true. Otherwise, we're just going to return false. So that's pretty much exactly what we did in these two examples. We just checked whether or not either of those conditions, if that condition is false, then we know that the nth bit is not set. That's going to give us return false. Otherwise, we're going to get a true. So let's go ahead and test this out on some uh, on the examples that we had up above to make sure that it works. So I'll say is second bit set for binary representation of six. So let's go ahead and test that out. So we'll say print is nth bit set, and then we'll feed it in six. And we want to check whether or not the second bit is set. So we'll feed that in as the second argument. Let's go ahead and also put in is 
uh, zeroth bit set. So this is just like what we had up above as well for binary representation of six. So same thing. What we're going to do here is we're going to say basically the same thing. Print is nth bit set six and then zero because we want to check whether or not the zeroth bit is set. Let's go ahead and write that and then we'll clear the terminal just to make sure the output is clean. Python and then this is called is nth bit set. And then what we see here is true. So again, the binary representation of six again is one, one, zero. We're checking whether or not the second bit is set. That is the first one that's set, that's true. And then we're checking in the second condition here whether or not the zeroth bit, again, the last bit there, the zero is set, and that is false. So that's exactly what we expect. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. The code as always will be available on my GitHub and you can find that in the link in the description of this video. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.